Father President, distinguished faculty, staff, guests, Archbishop Gregory, Dr. Coldike, esteemed graduates, family, and friends. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be on this dais with Bishop, Archbishop Gregory, who has been a dear friend for many years. And it was under his leadership that the Office for Black Catholics was established here in Chicago, giving African-American Catholics a visible voice in our church. I want to thank Father Senior and Catholic Theological Union for bestowing this prestigious honor upon me. I stand here before you tonight filled with awe and humility. I must tell you that when I received the letter from Father Senior informing me that I had been selected to receive this honorary doctorate in ministry, I could not believe my eyes. I said, why me? What had I done to deserve to be honored by this prestigious school of theology? But then I heard a small voice inside of me saying, why not you, that your God may be glorified? To God be the glory for the things he has done. <laughs> Therefore, I accept this honor not in my own name, but in the name of those on whose shoulders I stand this evening, the known and unknown heroes and sheroes who have walked with me along life's journey. My beloved parents, Robert and Marcella, who with quiet dignity taught me early in life to stand for what was right and just, who left their faith denomination when it would not accept any children of color in their schools. The Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, who were my first teachers and brought me into the Catholic faith. A dear friend, Sister Evangeline McSloy, who first invited me to active, active ministry, recognizing my gift for proclaiming God's word and encouraging me to become a lay minister. My religious congregation, the Daughters of the Heart of Mary, who walk with me and encourage and support me. Father Michael Flager, who has inspired, mentored, and encouraged me to speak truth to power. Bishop Raymond Geddard, who after the horrific beating of a young African-American boy by three young men who were graduates of our Catholic high schools, had the courage to appoint a task force to make a recommendation to the archdiocese to proactively address the institutional and systemic sin of racism in the church which ultimately led to the establishment of the Office for Racial Justice. And His Eminence Francis Cardinal George, who appointed me to serve as his executive assistant, allowing me to serve at the highest levels of the administration of the archdiocese. All of these people were placed in my life by God to fulfill his plans for me. My commitment to the work for racial justice was not necessarily my choice, but God's commission. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me to work for justice. Send me to speak truth to power. Send me to challenge racial superiority. But I do not go alone. I do not do this work alone. There are so many steadfast and committed people who have dedicated their lives to make this church that we love truly Catholic and truly inclusive. Without them, without the continued commitment of Cardinal George to address the sin of racism, without institutions like Catholic Theological Union that is a wonderful collaborator in this work for racial justice, I would not be receiving this honor this evening. In honoring me, you honor the mission entrusted to me. In honoring me, you honor those who stand with me in the struggle for racial justice. In honoring me, you honor those who have gone before me and those yet unborn. In honoring me, you honor the life and legacy of Father Augustus Tolton and all African-American Catholics who bore the degradation of racism, yet remain faithful in a church that all too often remains silent in the face of injustice. But most importantly, in honoring me, you honor the God who created me, formed me in my mother's womb, and called me by name, sent me to proclaim freedom to those held in the captive bonds of racial injustice. Whenever I grow weary and want to give up in believing that America and our church can be free of the sin of racism, I think of a mural of the Last Supper that is at St. Sabina's Church. 
Around the table are men and women and children of every race and color, and in the middle is a very faint image of Jesus. You can barely see him. When I asked Father Flager why the image of Jesus was so faint, it is the answer that I received that keeps me doing this work. It was simply this. Until everyone is welcomed at this table, Jesus cannot come into the fullness of his glory. On behalf of the Archdiocese of Chicago's commitment to working to eradicate the sin of racism that continues to divide and diminish the people of God, I humbly accept this honor and rededicate my life to this sacred mission, continuing to work tirelessly to make our church, our society, and our world more just and inclusive of all people, where all are truly welcome at the banquet table in order that Jesus might come into the fullness of his glory. Congratulations to our graduates who have worked very hard to achieve your dreams and goals. May you go forth to let your light shine in the darkest corners of the world so that Jesus will come into the fullness of his glory. To God be the glory. Thank you and God bless.